Tonight's story is Bopalucci from Tales of the Punjab, Told by the People by Flora Annie Steele. This book was originally published in 1894 and it is in the public domain. I chose this story because it has a rather remarkable heroine, as I'm sure you will discover. On that note, um, I am referring to our heroine as Bopalucci although I am sure that is not the actual correct pronunciation, and I would love it if somebody would help me out in the comments below. Now, let's open our imaginations and begin. Once upon a time, a number of young girls went to draw water at the village well, and while they were filling their jars, they fell a-talking of their betrothals and weddings. Said one, my uncle will soon be coming with bridal presents, and he is to bring the finest clothing imaginable. Said a second, and my uncle-in-law is coming, I know, bringing the most delicious sweetmeats you could think of. Said a third, oh, my uncle will be here in no time with the rarest jewels in the world. But Bopalucci, who was the prettiest girl of them all, looked sad, for she was an orphan and she had no one to arrange a marriage for her. Nevertheless, she was too proud to remain silent, and so she said gaily, And my uncle is coming also, bringing me fine dresses, fine food, and fine jewels. Now, a wandering peddler, who sold sweet scents and cosmetics of all sorts to the countrywomen, happened to be sitting near the well, and he heard what Bopalucci said. Being much struck by her beauty and spirit, he determined to marry her himself, and the very next day, disguised as a well-to-do farmer, he came to Bopalucci's house, laden with trays upon trays of fine dresses, fine food, and fine jewels, for he was not a real peddler, but a wicked robber, ever so rich. Bopalucci could hardly believe her eyes, for everything was just as she had foretold, and the robber said that he was her father's brother, who had been away in the world for years, and had now come back to arrange her marriage with one of his sons, her cousin. Hearing this, Bopalucci, of course, believed it all, and she was ever so much pleased, so she packed up the few things she possessed in a bundle, and she set off with the robber in high spirits. But as they went along the road, a crow sitting on a branch croaked, Bopalucci, tis a pity. You have lost your wits, my pretty. Tis no uncle that relieves you, but a robber who deceives you. Uncle, said Bopalucci, that crow croaks funnily. What does it say? Pooh, returned the robber. All the crows in this country croak like that. A little further on they met a peacock, which, as soon as it caught sight of the pretty little maiden, began to scream, Bopalucci, tis a pity, you have lost your wits, my pretty, tis no uncle that relieves you, but a robber who deceives you. Uncle, said the girl, that peacock screams funnily, what does it say? Pooh, returned the robber, all peacocks scream like that in this country. By and by a jackal slunk across the road, and the moment it saw poor pretty Bopalucci it began to howl, Bopalucci, tis a pity, you have lost your wits, my pretty, tis no uncle that relieves you, but a robber who deceives you. Uncle, said the maiden, that jackal howls funnily, what does it say? Pooh, returned the robber, all jackals howl like that in this country. So poor pretty Bopalucci journeyed on until they reached the robber's house, and then he told her who he was and how he intended to marry her himself. She wept and cried bitterly, but the robber had no pity, and he left her in the charge of his old, oh, ever so old mother, while he went out to make arrangements for the marriage feast. Now Bopalucci had such beautiful hair that it reached right down to her ankles, but the old mother hadn't a hair on her old bald head. Daughter, said the old, ever so old mother, as she was putting the bridal dress on Bopalucci, how did you manage to get such beautiful hair? Well, replied Bopalucci, my mother made it grow by pounding my head in the big mortar for husking rice. At every stroke of the pestle, my hair grew longer and longer. I assure you, it is a plan that never fails. Perhaps it would make my hair grow, said the old woman eagerly. "'Perhaps it would,' quoth cunning Bopalucci. "'So the old, ever so old mother put her head in the mortar, "'and Bopalucci pounded away with such a will that the old lady died. 
Then Bobolucci dressed the dead body in the scarlet bridal dress, and she seated it on the low bridal chair, drew the veil over the face, and put the spinning wheel in front of it, so that when the robber came home he might think it was the bride. Then she put on the old mother's clothes, and, seizing her own bundle, stepped out of the house as quickly as possible. On her way home, she met the robber, who was returning with a stolen millstone to grind the corn for the wedding feast on his head. She was dreadfully frightened and slipped behind the hedge so as not to be seen. But the robber, not recognizing her in the mother's dress, thought she was a strange woman from a neighboring village, and so to avoid being seen, he slipped behind the other hedge. Thus Bopolucci reached home in safety. Meanwhile, the robber, having come to his house, saw the figure in bridal scarlet sitting on the bridal chair, spinning, and so of course he thought it was Bopolucci. So he called to her to help him down at the millstone, but she didn't answer. He called again, and still she didn't answer. Then he fell into a rage, and he threw the millstone at her head. The figure toppled over, and lo and behold, it was not Bopolucci at all, but his old, ever-so-old mother whereupon the robber wept and beat his breast, thinking he had killed her. But when he discovered that pretty Bopolucci had run away, he became wild with rage and determined to bring her back somehow. Now, Bopolucci was convinced that the robber would try to carry her off, so every night she begged a new lodging in some friend's house, leaving her own little bed in her own little house quite empty. But after a month or so, she had come to the end of her friends, and she did not like to ask any of them to give her shelter a second time. So she determined to brave it out and sleep at home, whatever happened. But she took a bill hook to bed with her. Sure enough, in the very middle of the night, four men crept in, and, each seizing a leg of the bed, lifted it up and walked off, the robber himself having hold of the leg close behind her head. Bopolucci was wide awake, but pretended to be fast asleep until she came to a wild, deserted spot where the thieves were off their guard. Then she whipped out the billhook and in a twinkling cut off the heads of the two thieves at the foot of the bed. Turning around quickly, she did the same to the other thief at the head, but the robber himself ran away in a terrible fright, and he scrambled like a wildcat up a tree close by before she could reach him. "'Come down!' cried brave Bopolucci, brandishing the billhook, "'and fight it out!' But the robber would not come down, so Bopolucci gathered all the sticks she could find, piled them around the tree, and set fire to them. And of course the tree caught fire also, and the robber, half stifled with the smoke, tried to jump down and was immediately killed. After that, Bopolucci went to the robber's house and she carried off all the gold and silver, jewels and clothes that were hidden there, coming back to the village so rich that she could marry anyone she pleased. And that was the end of Bopolucci's adventures. I think this story is so funny and charming. Um, I love how Bopolucci just immediately chooses the, the way of violence and uh, kills everybody so uh, readily. Um, it was definitely not what I was expecting. Um, and I like the fact that she ends up, you know, rich and, and independent and can do whatever she pleases. Um, the book that this story originally appeared in is called The Tales of the Punjab Told by the People. Um, it's a collection of old stories from the Punjab region, um, which today is in both India and Pakistan. Um, the author of this book, Flora Annie Steele, was married to a member of the British Civil Service who was stationed in this region. Um, and she says that she curated this collection of folk stories by asking all the local children to tell her their favorite story. And then over repeated recitations would kind of piece together um, different bits and details that were uh, in different versions of the story. Um, the book as a whole is pretty charming. If you like this story or if you like stories um, from India, Pakistan, from that region, um, I really do recommend it. I will put a link to the original scan of this book on archive.org in the description below. Um, I'm reading the story on behalf of Restored Lore, where we find old stories and old traditions, especially those with dark and mystical themes, um, and try to connect them with new audiences. So if you enjoy curious tales and obscure knowledge, subscribe and click the notification icon for more. See you next time.